I cannot believe I'm going to chop my beauty. It is happening. I'm chopping. I'm chopping my beauty. Look at this beauty. She is an icon. She is a legend. She is the moment. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Melissa and for today's video, we are doing it. We are chopping my philodendron Florida beauty. Look at this thing. Look at that leaf. And look at all this wonderful growth I have gotten from this plant. So the backstory is I got this as a unrooted propagation. This one beautiful leaf sold me on this plant and just the overall maturity of it and was so excited. It took its time, it rooted, and I noticed the first little bump of growth and I literally was thrilled. I was watching that leaf unfurl constantly, like constantly. And it was all green, this one here, this one. This was my first leaf, all green. And I was really sad. And so the next one unfurled, super excited again. I'm like, oh yes, it's gonna be variegated, all green again. And each new leaf after has been all green, all green. So it now has one, two, three, four, five green leaves after the original. And it's actually working on more growth. And I've been air layering the bottom section and I was going to chop this plant probably a week or so ago, but it's growing pretty steadily here in the new space. And I only air layered three nodes and I actually have, I have another node here that is not air layered. And then I have one more at the top here that is forming, there's like a new growth. But I don't wanna wait anymore. I wanna go ahead and unravel these um, air layered sacks I created. I have not checked the roots in these, but I can see roots in this top one but I can't see too many roots in the bottom two nodes. So we're gonna take a look and see what's going on and I'm going to be chopping this plant to hopefully promote variegation, that is the goal. So if you didn't know, variegated plants, if it's not stable variegation, it can revert and it happens often in my experience. I have several plants in my collection that have reverted and have just like reverted to all green. And I have some that have, it really depends on the genetics of the plant. I have one plant in my collection that does this weird every other leaf variegation. It gives me a green leaf, then a variegated leaf, then a green leaf. And that's my Syngonium albo. I actually have a couple Syngonium albos. And I have had some give me like random green and then some like give me random variegation. So it's very dependent on the plant. Another example, my pink princess, I have a couple of them. One of mine just like, I rooted it from the very beginning. It was one leaf and the growth came out okay and I decided to sell a cutting. And when I chopped it, it grew from a different node below where I chopped and out of that node, the growth that came, it grew all pink. So I had like, I don't know, like four or five really small pink leaves and I didn't want to let it continue growing the way it was growing. So I completely chopped it back and I actually did that recently. I made some content on my Instagram about it if you're curious, but I'm waiting for it basically to regrow to see if I can get I, be, I just wanted to regrow a whole new plant and just get rid of the all pink because without like enough chlorophyll, that plant's not going to sustain itself for very long. And air layering, I wanted to talk about air layering. So air layering is a process that you can do to root the nodes and have them grow before you actually chop the plant. Now I have a lot of experience with propagating because I propagate so many times. A lot of my plants came from cuttings. I rooted them. I have since propagated, fill out the pots. I do that so many times. So if you have some like more expensive plants or cuttings, say you want to chop your Monstera albo and you know, instead of just like chopping it and taking a chance of it rotting or something happening to the cutting, air layering is a way that you can get roots first before actually chopping the plant. And once you have roots, you know, you can go ahead and pot it up and then, you know, you can go ahead and take your cutting and then it's done. And you don't have to worry about cutting it first and then 
having like risk to that cutting. Since the cuttings are still on the main plant, it's getting nutrients and stuff from the plant. So it's actually going to help this plant grow and root faster. If you didn't know, older nodes in my experience on a plant have a harder time rooting than some of the newer nodes. I have rooted plenty of philodendron at Florida Ghost and based off my experience with them, they do take a long time to root and produce a new leaf. So keep that in mind if you are planning on chopping your plant or you're curious about it or you want to chop kind of the safest way to go about this is air layering right now I just have like basically aerial roots inside of these pockets of moss and you know I'm going to uncover this here and show you what the roots look like and then I can go ahead and chop and what I have here also is I have some damp sphagnum moss I just put some water in here and I mix some of my fertilizer in this water. And so I'm gonna wring this sphagnum moss out and I have some individual cups that I'm going to put the moss into. And I'm gonna let these cuttings root a little bit longer on their own. And then when they're ready, I can pot them up. And the only other thing you're gonna need is just some shears. Now I will say the newest node here, the earlier one, you can see roots inside of that pocket. I don't know if you can see all those roots in there. And these two here, I have not checked. I haven't really seen too many roots from, from what I can tell. So if these aren't rooted, I might just leave those on a bit longer and then just take this one cutting. And then I'm also gonna do a chop here and then just root this one in moss by itself. Cause I don't wanna take like two, a two leaf top cutting. I'd rather go ahead and chop again here. So that's the plan. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uncover these with you, take a look at the roots. And if I have enough roots, I'm gonna go ahead and cut and then we will pop them into individual cups. The reason for chopping and the reason for cutting back a plant is to promote variegation. And what I mean by that is, so I'm gonna show you here. So right here on this, you, you see this axillary little bud right there, that new node, that new growth. Well, it could potentially, you know, grow out to be variegated because it's on a different spot of this plant. So the original leaf here came out of this other side. So this is the original leaf. And so when this guy grew, his node was here and he grew out this way. And that's the reason for chopping back is to hopefully promote variegation on a growth from a different node on the plant. I have spilled this pot twice, you guys, and the dirt came flying out everywhere because it's a little top heavy. I have it out of its ceramic pod and it keeps tipping over, so I need to stop. Yeah, I'm gonna sit him back in his ceramic pot before I knock this plant over again. <laughs> a little top heavy with these balls of moss. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna clean my shears. I just have an alcohol wipe. And it's important to sanitize your shears because you don't want to transfer bacteria. Now I don't do this all the time, but since this is a pretty expensive plant, I don't want to risk anything. So it's important to kind of take those measures to have the best chance with your cutting. All right, have you moved down a little bit? So obviously this one here has roots. So I'm going to uncover the next one and see if I can cut another time because you can always put these wraps back on. You know, I don't wanna cut first in case it doesn't have any roots. I'd rather it stay on the plant a little bit longer and at least just take the top cutting. So I just have tape and a saran wrap. That's all I have on here. All right, so like my assumption was right, I'm gonna show you. So these older nodes here, as you can see, have not rooted yet. You can see right here. So these have been on here for about, it's been over two weeks, I would imagine. Yeah, I will have to add him back on. So it looks like I'm probably only gonna be able to take this top cut. Yeah, and I don't even think this bottom node is even rooted at all either. So I'm gonna just take this top section and I will do this on camera with you. So I kind of separated the moss a bit. If you can see, that's the part that we're gonna cut right here. So I don't know if you can see right there, that's where the new growth is going to activate right there. So I'm gonna cut above on the stem right there. And then I have my roots all ready to go in that sack. So that's what I'm gonna do. 
All right, I'm gonna do one cut. One, two, three. All right, you can see, so that's where I cut there. And I have my roots in this sack already. You can see all those roots. These I don't think will have a hard time rooting. I'm gonna go ahead and cut again because I'm just gonna root this in sphagnum moss, this top cut, and then this will be a mid cut, just to hopefully further my chance of some maybe variegation along the way. And I wanna stick this into moss and these should root fairly quickly, I would imagine, since they are newer nodes. And then this one, it's really important. You see how that end is wet right there? So you really want that end to callous and dry so that you have a less chance of getting rot. So if you were to stick this, say this plant didn't have roots and you chopped it and then you stick it, say, straight in water, there's a good chance that while this is still wet, that bacteria and stuff, whatever is in your water, could potentially get into the plant and cause root rot. So that's why it's important to let these ends dry. Usually it takes like 30 minutes to an hour, give or take, you know. Sometimes some of these will have like a sticky sap that will run out like white. It really depends on the plant, but I give it time to callus. I'm gonna let this sit with the root, with the moss cover, covering the roots because you don't want your roots to dry out. That's really important. So I'm gonna leave him sit here probably for like 30 minutes or so, let him callus, and then I'll check on it. Once this is dry, I feel comfortable sticking it down into moss. Another important thing I wanted to touch on is where you cut. So this is going to be a mid cut, this section, and since this is one vine up, this is a top cut, this node here could potentially activate and grow. It's going to continue growing from this top section here. You know, you can see the new leaf right there. I could technically cut here and root this section as well, but since this is just forming and since this doesn't have a leaf yet, I'm not going to cut here. So you want at least your cutting to have one leaf. So I'm going to cut below here. And since this is a mid cut, I have a little bit of stem in here. You want to leave as much room as possible in case your cutting decides to rot. So I'm just going to cut in half. I might cut a little bit more this way just so that this top cut has a little bit more room in case for some reason this decides to rot on me, I can cut above the rot and then I'm not cutting too close where I end up losing the whole plant. So I'm gonna cut just a little bit lower on the side, probably to like here, just like that. So now I'm left with a rooted mid cut right here that's going to produce a new leaf. As soon as these ends dry, I'm going to pot this into moss so he can continue rooting a bit more. And then, so this here is my top cut. And then once this dries, I'm gonna be sticking this part down into moss. And then I have, you know, it could potentially give me some variegation here. This could potentially activate and I could get variegation. And just so you know, flor philodendron floridas have extra floral nectaries. They produce sticky sap along the petioles. So you're gonna get very sticky when you touch these guys. So just be warned, it's very common with philodendron floridas. So just something to keep you know, an eye out. So yeah, I'm gonna let these cuttings just like lay here. We're gonna let them callus and then I will come back when these guys have dried and we'll continue. All right, we are back. It has been, it's probably been about 30 minutes. There's still a little bit of like gooiness. These guys have like a really sticky sap. So I'm gonna go ahead. I feel like they dried enough. I'm gonna go ahead and put them into moss. Yeah, and I will uncover this on here just so you guys can see the roots and what they look like. Now, I'm not going to disturb this root ball at all because I want this one to root a bit more. So I'm just going to take this plastic off. And I just wanna show you the root ball that has formed in this one. So I'm gonna let this one root a little bit more before I pot him into soil. And then that's where the new growth will emerge right there out of that node. And who knows, maybe, maybe it'll be variegated, you never know. So what I'm gonna do is actually just put him into some more moss. This one will be really easy. And you don't wanna like pack the moss super tight cause you want some airflow. So I just do like a layer on the bottom. I'm also just going to wrap some more moss around this little root ball itself and just kind of pluck him down in there. I just want to cover all the roots. And this does have side holes, this container I'm using, so I'm not too worried, but you just want them just secured down in there. So yeah, that is that one. So what we're gonna do for this one, so this is the top cutting here. And so what I'm gonna do is wrap some moss around the node and we're gonna take our cup 
some more moss down in here and just kind of get this guy down into some moss like that. And then I'll just fill up around a little bit and this will be our top cutting. Now it is important to keep these guys moist, the wet, like the moss, you don't want them to like completely dry out. So I just have to make sure to keep these guys wet. I'm probably actually gonna end up putting these guys in my greenhouse behind me and then just give these guys some water and just check on them. Cause my greenhouse does dry pretty fast. So I might actually end up putting a layer of, um, that, of that saran wrap over top just to hold in some humidity. Yeah, so there we go. So we have a top cut here that these guys have no roots. So this one's gonna to have to root in there. And then we have our mid cut here that is rooted already. So yeah, I'm gonna let him, gonna let these grow and I'll pop them up eventually. And hopefully I can get some variegation back and I'll show you the main plant. So this one, I just ended up putting the wrap back on here and just like moistened it and put this one back. And so the new growth is gonna come out of that node from that one that we chopped, the new growth. It's actually probably covered in this moss, so I'm probably gonna to have to eventually take that out. And then maybe, who knows, maybe this node will be variegated that grows out and I won't have to chop anymore, but we'll see. I'm probably still gonna end up chopping this plant back. These nodes just need more time to root into the moss. So that's what I'm left with. And yeah, I just took a top cut and a mid cut off. So yeah, thank you for watching that. I'm excited to see these guys root and grow and I'm excited to see if I'm gonna get any kind of irrigation back. I honestly am just like crossing my fingers. I wanted a philodendron Florida beauty for so long and I splurged and bought a cutting and it was expensive. I'll just say that I paid $350 for my cutting. Yes, it was unrooted, I paid for it and yeah. So that's how much it cost me. And yeah, hopefully I can get some variegation. That's the plan. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any questions about propagation or anything at all, just let me know. I have propagated so much and I, I, f I feel like I have a lot of knowledge on propagation and you know, kind of what does well, what doesn't, what kind of takes a long, a long time. I have a lot of plants in my collection, so I have propagated a lot. So thank you again so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope you come back to another video soon.